Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we're going to answer a patron's question regarding this part here and how to model it. Now when looking at a part like this we need to first break it down into its individual components. With technical drawings we get a hint of what geometry is going to be used when creating this model. For instance we can see the dividing faces of this part. So this part here is a face and these parts and obviously this is basically a duplicate of this part here. If we look at our base primitives and our base sketch geometry, we can see that this is basically part of a slot. So we took one of the curves off the slot, then we get this shape. Then we have to deal with the twist, which is the hardest part in this project. So let's have a look at how we create this model in FreeCAD. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone or at coffee via ko-fi.com forward slash m-a-n-g-0. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content and that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. We're going to be looking at two workflows one through the curves workbench and one through the surface workbench. First, let's sketch the easy part of this project. We're going to lay down some slot geometry with the dimensions here. So radius of 10, diameter of 10 for the hole and between the point of this circle. And if we think of this as one piece of geometry, there's going to be 10 millimeters here. Let's add that to the sketch. We're going to create a new sketch in FreeCAD and look down on the XY plane and hit OK. For this, we're going to be using the slot geometry and I'm going to attach it to the center point and come out. I've got the auto constraints on if we look over to the left hand side. Also got the auto remove redundance. And what we're going to do is just attach that to that line there. Now we don't need the right hand side, so we can delete that. We're going to make these two equal and also place a line to close this geometry, like so. Now we can add our radius of 10 millimeter. Make sure that these two lines have a horizontal constraint, so kept nice and straight. And remember we've got a length here, so from here to here, which is in line with this point in the center where our hole will be is 10 millimeters as well. So let's place a length in there of 10 mil and we're going to finally finish with a hole with a diameter of 10 mil as well. Strain a diameter of 10 millimeters. So looking back at the technical drawing we can see we've created this here. We've got to create the other side but rotated around the other way. Now there's a number of ways of doing that. We can create the sketch again, we can clone and rotate it, but depending on what we do, it changes our workflow. So let's close that sketch and show the options here. If I come over to the draft workbench, we can clone the sketch by using the clone tool. So modifications, clone. That sketch is now cloned. Let's hide the grid in and we can rotate this right click transform and we can rotate this around this way and rotate it around this way and set the placement on the position going along the x-axis this way here and we want that 45 millimeters remember that the center point that we constrain this to is the point in the center of this circle. So if I go view toggle axis cross, we can see it there. So 44 millimeters places that, that distance away. If we wanted to use a separate sketch, let's zero that out. So let's zero that. And let's come over to the sketcher. And I'm going to create a sketch XY plane. That's fine. Let's do that and place a line in here, like so. 
and set this to 44 millimeters. This gives us a benefit of allowing us to actually change this dimension via something like a formula or using the constraints in our property view and allowing say this sketch look at the map mode come into here and we're going to select this point and OK so we've got that attached to that point this means we can manipulate this line this line here on the sketch let's just hide the axis cross we can see the constraints down here and we can move that if we wanted to say 20 millimeters and we can move that about so it gives us a bit more flexibility there we could re-sketch this we could duplicate the sketch it's totally up to you i like clones because we can just clone those in and easily manipulate those so we have these two here i can hide this sketch if i want to so we've done the easy part really we just need to come into the part and extrude these and you can see I'm using the part workflow here because so I'm creating multiple bodies let's control click both of those so they're selected and use the extrude that means if I look down we've got the sketch and the sketch clone selected there got four millimeter width so let's change long length or four mil so we extruded those there so you can see we've got multiple bodies and this one work in the part design at this current time. And also we're using other workbenches as well. So the part really helps us in tackling this model. Now I'm going to be using something called the Curves Workbench. So if I come down to the Curves Workbench, if you haven't got this installed, then it's under Tools, Add-on Manager, and we can install it from there. And I'm gonna use this tool here, the Blend Curve. This allows me to blend edges together with continuity across those. If we select one edge and then select the other by control clicking them and using the blend curve, then you can see, well, it's not really working. So let's delete that. We've got to extract out those edges. To do that, we click on one edge and use one of these tools here called the join curve. So this one here, the join curve, if we click that, that will bring this edge out. Let's try that again. Click on it and click on the join curve. You can see we've got a join curve there. Let's do the other one. Join curve. And if I click on the extrude and press the space bar, you can see those edges have been extracted out. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. Click one, join curve, click the other one, and use the join curve. Let's do the same on this side, this one. You can't select both of them, join curve and that one, because if you do, they will connect up together. And we'll do the same on this, join curve and join curve. So if I press the space bar by selecting this one to hide it and select this one and press the space bar, we have these curves here. So now we have to create the twist by creating the blend betweens here. I'm gonna work from left to right. So keeping it constant as we're working. So I'm gonna select this one and I need to get myself positioned so I understand where we are. That's view toggle axis cross, there we go. So I've got an idea of whereabouts we are. Now sometimes this can be a bit tricky visualizing this. So we want to select this join curve, control click the other one and use the blend curve. And do the same on the other side. Don't worry about how it's been twisted we can sort that out in a minute do the other one now i've got those in place i select both of them so we edit the values together and because we've gone from left to right and left to right this means that the continuity from edge one and edge two 
will be the same order. So this will be edge one this side, and this will be edge one this side, and edge two. So we've selected them in that order. So select both of these. We know that this side is edge one. Continuity. I'm just going to go C0 for this one and C0 for this one as well. And click off and we get straight continuity across those. So that's a straight connection. And this is what we start with to understand where they sit. You can see they sit in the middle of these lines. And this is to do with the parameter. So look at parameter one. This is the starting parameter. So you can see it's 3.85 millimeters. If I set this to zero, this moves edge one, so this is edge one, to the zero here. If I set this to something like 100, then it will change to 10, which is the maximum length of this line, and it will place it at 10 millimeters. So we've got zero to 10. So let's just place this one at zero and come over to the other side and if we zero out that one as well, that place it to the beginning. And now we can change the continuity. So I'm going to set this to G1. So we can see how that's curved around. And also set the other side to a G1. And we'll just click off to have a look, see what's happened. And clicking off, unselect them. We still got this S bend in here. So I'm going to control select those again. And this is to do with the scale factor. So we look at the scale and we're going to set this to minus one on this side. And on this side, it's going to be positive one. So we're just changing the scale between those. And what we get is our twist coming into effect. We can change this continuity if we want and the scaling to get a different effect. So you can see that G2 will bring this into a different continuity between those and it goes all the way up to G4. And it's depending what effect you have. It may not look different, but there are some differences between those. For this one, I'm just gonna go for the G1 continuity. And we can have a G1 and a G4, whatever combination you want. So that's one side done. Let's do the other side. So moving from left to right, like so, control clicking them, using the blend, and the same with this one. And then using the blend. Selecting both those curves Set to C0 first for both of them, on both sides, edge one and edge two. Set in the parameters, place that to zero, and that puts it on this end, so we need to increase this to say, well it's 10, but we put 100 there, that will automatically go to the highest length, so it's right on that edge. And parameter two, maybe zero, no it's 10, there we go. The scale we're going to do minus one and the scale up here is one. And then we can use the continuity to G1 and the same on the other side to G1. So we have G1 curves all the way across here. So we've done the curvature across these. These join curves we can hide if we want to. So I can select all the join curves by using the shift select and pressing the space bar. Now we bring back the extrude. So these extrudes here, shift select those, press the space bar. And we're ready to create our surfaces across these. For that, I'm gonna go back to the part workbench. And what we're doing is taking this curve and this one connect up this side with a ruled surface. Now see how it's bow tied. Don't worry, click on the ruled surface and look at our orientation. And we just try forward, click off, 
and that's all set for us. If forward doesn't work, then try reverse. So this sets the orientation of the ruled surface. So if you have any bow tie-in or anything, we can try those there. Let's do the same on the other side. So we're using this line and this line, ruled surface. Again, we've got problems. Click on that ruled surface, orientation, forward, and click off. Now I advise you to hide the rule surfaces now. So control click one and the other, press the space bar. And we're gonna create a ruled surface across these two. Ruled surface, and again with these two, I need to set the orientation of both of those. So we come into the, the ruled surface. I'm just gonna control select both of those. And we'll change that to forward for both of them. There we go. And now we need to bring back the ruled surface that we created by pressing the space bar. So I'm showing both those ruled surfaces. And well, we're at the stage now, we can join these together. So we've got a number of ruled surfaces and a strewed that we need to join. For that, control click the strewed and control click the ruled surfaces, making sure we get all of them. And we've got one around this side as well, control click that. So we've got all of the surfaces and the strewed selected. Come up the part, compound, make compound. So those are compounded together. We can see our compound is here. If I go back to the Curse Workbench, and we've got something called Parametric Solid. If I click that, you can see we've got a shell. So this isn't a solid yet. Now, why isn't that a solid? Is because we've actually created this shape, but let's just delete that and bring back the compound. We've got a solid shape here, solid shape here, and basically a shell. So we need to close this shell and then compound them together or fuse them together, or we need to open these two solids, the extrudes, to make them a shell and join them all together. Again, there is a number of ways of doing that with the Curves Workbench. For instance, I can come in and take all these phases by control selecting them, all the faces like so. And let me try that again because I took my hand off the control key before I clicked anything. Let's select all of those. And this is quite a long winded way of doing it. So I'll select all the faces there. Like so, making sure we haven't missed any. And there's another tool, this one here. So extract subshapes. Click on that. We get all the compound faces. And then if we take all of those, like so, and come in and use the parametric solid, we actually get a solid from those. So you can see how we connected up all those faces with that solid. That is quite a long-winded way of doing it. So let's delete that solid and basically get rid of all those compounds. And shift select them and delete those. Bring back the original compound. I'm gonna delete that to release what's inside. So we need to close this part inside. Let's hide these strews again. And we can see what's going on. So we've got this here. If we come over to the part and select this top edge and the bottom edge, like so, broad surface, come around to the other side, do the same, bottom and top, control selecting those, rule surface, we've closed that shape. Let's come back to the curves workbench. and come in, take all the ruled surfaces, making sure we've got them all. 
you can control select them from the screen. And we're going to come in and use the parametric solid. Notice it's gone green, so we've got a solid here. And now we've got two extrudes and a solid. If I take all three of those and again come in and use parametric solid, we get a shell, which is no good to us. But if we come over to the part workbench and select all three of those, part, boolean, and union, we get a fusion, which is a solid. And I'll do my usual of creating a sphere to prove that it is actually solid. And we need to transform that sphere. Right click, transform into the middle or somewhere. One we want to keep, one we want to remove, and we do a cut in there. And you can see we've cut all the way through there, so it shows that it's a solid, solid all the way through. Let's just delete that cut. And that's it. So that's how to make that object with the curves workbench. If you want to make it via the surface workbench, you do a very similar thing. Let's come out to the surface workbench. And we've got the same tool in here. If you're running on the upper versions of FreeCAD at the time of speaking. So if I go help about FreeCAD, you can see that I'm on 0.21 for this one. So let's have a look at the workflow for the surface workbench with this tool, the blend curve. This is a bit different to the curves workbench and it's a lot quicker. We don't have to extract out the edges. We can just control click them. So click one then control click the other and use the blend curve. The blend curve will be added between the edges. This is the start edge and this is the end edge. So the first one you click is the start edge. So click on that blend curve and you'll see the first edge is the start edge, edge seven. We've got the parameter here that only goes from zero to one. So anything in between, say 0 0.5, it's going to place us in the center of that edge. So for this one, we need to go all the way up to one to get to the end. And this one is already at the end, which is at zero. And you can see that the curvature between these is not really visible. And this is to do with the continuity and the size. So we've got a start continuity and a start size. Let's set this continuity to zero. This means there will be a straight line going from the first edge. Let's do the same on the other one, zero. So we've got zero continuity between them. Now the size is how much that continuity takes effect. So if we increase this size, say about four on each side, then with continuity or zero, we're not going to see anything because it's just a straight line. Let's increase this continuity to one. And you can see that the four has brought us right out here. If I decrease this to three, we can see we're decreasing. We still got the second edge as the end size of four. And we'll decrease this to three and also come in and change the continuity to match the start to one. And you'll see at the middle point, because these are reflected, start continuity of one, end continuity of one, and the size is, then the crossover will be in the center. We can mix and match the continuities as well as the start size. So I'm gonna set for start size of four and end size of two, then they will differ. The same as the continuity, let's place the start one up to three, and then we get a different effect between the two of them. But if we want to balance continuity, then we just balance both the start and end to say three, and the end size and start size to say four. And we get that balanced curve there. So as you can see, it's very similar to the curves workbench, but it's a lot quicker to apply that because we don't have to extract out the edges. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I hope to see you again soon. 
If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone or at coffee via ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.